Hi, I'm Carl Ross of the University of Portsmouth, the United Kingdom. Today is the 9th of November 2013, and I'm going to solve a problem using ANSYS, which is the elastic buckling of a thin walled cone under lateral pressure. So, first, I pick up preferences, I pick on structural, I press OK, I then pick preprocessor, element type, add, edit, delete, add. And I'm going to use a shell 281 because I'm using ANSYS shell 8, sorry, I beg your pardon, shell 8 nine, node 93, shell 8 node 93 I'm using because I'm using ANSYS 11. So uh, I'll sort that out there. I then pick on real constants and I put add and delete. I'm going to add and the thickness, okay, the thickness of this element is 1.844 millimeters so i'll put that in 0.844 millimeters and if i put that in one node it applies it means it's constant throughout so we close that we've got material properties material models structural linear elastic isotropic and the young's modulus is uh, 1.83 times 10 to the fifth megapascals, 1.83 E5. And the Poisson's ratio is 0 0.28. So I'll put that in and I'll OK that. And then I'll exit from here. I will exit. So I've put in the basic things there. I'm going to model now. We're modeling. I'll be going to uh, uh, create. I pick on volumes, I pick on cone, I pick on by dimensions, and the bottom radius of the uh, of the uh, cone is 100.06 millimeters. So I'll put that in 100.06 millimeters, and the top radius is 75.23 millimeters. So I'll put that in. And the Z coordinates, the bottom is zero. The vertical height of it between the two ends is 100.09 millimeters. This is the perpendicular height between the two uh, ends. So I put OK, and I've got a cone there. I'm going to change the view of that to ISO. I do that, and then we've got the cone. I'm going to uh, mesh it now, so I look for meshing, I look for mesh tool, and I'm going to change this. I'm going to make a fairly crude mesh because it's just a demonstration. Change that to areas, and then I'm going to mesh it. So I'll go up here, I've got mesh there, click there, click there, move this up a bit. Press OK, and then I've got a mesh. Now I'm going to restrain the right end. So I put plot controls, pan zoom, rotate, and I'll press right. So it'll be down like that. And I'm going to restrain it completely on the right end. So I pick on solutions, define loads, apply, express structural, display nodes, I box the nodes, I box that there, and then I box this in here. Carefully, don't go too far to the left, or you'll restrain mid-side nodes. Just up there, I press apply, and I'm making all degrees of freedom zero. It's going to be completely fixed there. I press apply, and now I'm going to box in the left side. And there I'm just having simply supported ends, so X and Y displacements will be zero. I press apply, and I get rid of that there. I put UX and UY are zero. I press OK, and I've done that. I'm now going to put the pressure on, put the pressure um, on nodes, and it's, it's an eigen buckling problem. So I'm going to put minus one. I've done that wrong. Pressure on nodes. Box that in there. Got to box that in there. It's lateral pressure only. There's no pressure on this end here. So I. Box it in like that. Make sure I don't cover that in there. And I press 
apply and then I put minus one because we're going to work out the eigenvalue of this will be the pressure in megapascals so put it minus one we press OK and we apply the pressure we've now got to do the static analysis to get the geometrical symptoms matrices so we've gone on a bridge menu here down here and we've got analysis options and I've got to set the pre-stress to pre-stress to set the pre-stress so we look on that there find it there the pre-stress there pick on that pre-stress must be on and that's fine okay that pre-stress is on so I could run run the static analysis solve current LS I've done that it's done it it's done it now and that works out the geometrical system matrix that's why I've got to do it I've now got to do the eigen buckling so pick analysis type new analysis pick on eigen buckling which is elastic buckling okay that's fine pick on solution again and pick on analysis options and this is the number of eigen modes I want I'm going to pick 10 there you only need one for buckling really but I'll take 10 just for interest okay I've done that okay I've done that I can now do the eigen buckling to put solve covered ls I've done that it's done it it's done the eigen buckling and now we'll have a look at it so we've got the general pulse processor read results first set plot results deform shape pick on that deform shape okay there you are it's 14.005 megapascals which is reasonable for elastic buckling the plastic buckling was full so the the, the plastic knockdown factor is about uh, about just over three which is about right so we've got plot controls pan zoom rotate and we'll uh, put a front there and we'll um, now um, pick on plot controls again we've got animate pick on mode shape changes to point not seven five because we'll get a fast I put not five five there not seven five we press OK and there we got it and that looks like it's 14 megapascal which is quite reasonable and it's seven lobes according to the experiment and that looks like it's about seven lobes there and that's the end thank you ladies and gentlemen hello ladies and gentlemen I'm Carl Ross of University of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom and today I'm going to solve a problem for a conical, thin ball conical shell under external lateral pressure and uh, um, I'm going to use a slightly different method to a method I used earlier so preferences, structural, ok um, preprocessor, element type add, edit, delete, add and I'm going to pick the shell 93 which is shell 93, I press ok and I'm going to add another shell 93 that one's, the first one is going to be for, for the cone and the second one is going to be for the end cap so pick on real constants add a delete and I'm going to put the thickness of shell 1 shell 1 which is going to be um, the thickness of the conical shell which is 1.84 millimeters and I OK that I then pick on shell 2 OK that and I'm going to make that 10 times larger because that's the end cap we don't want it to break there we only interested in the wall breaking I put 18.4 and I put that there and that's fine and now we pick on the material properties I pick on material models pick on structural linear elastic isotropic and I'm going to put the Young's modulus in which is uh, 1.83 1.83 times 10 to the 5th Pascal, so we put 1.83E5 the Pascal ratio is 0 0.28 we OK there we then pick on material and we exit we then pick on um, modelling we pick on create 
and volumes then cone by dimensions you pick on that there you put the bottom radius in which is 100.06 millimeters so I'll put that in 100.06 and then we put the top radius which is 75.23 and then the Z coordinates that's vertical axis the bottom is 0 the top is 100.08 the perpendicular distance between the two ends is 100.08 millimeters it's 0 to 360 degrees so I'll do that there you are I've got my model I'm gonna um, pan zoom rotate it to an isoparametric isometric view and I'm gonna mesh the, the shell first so we look for the mesh tool here look for meshing there's meshing I pick on that I pick on mesh tool and I'm gonna pick on this I'm gonna first change this to areas because the elements are in areas and not in volumes I pick on that and that says shell one so that means I'm gonna use the thickness of 1.84 for that bit I pick on mesh beg your pardon that's not the right one there pick it on further up I'm gonna pick on mesh which is that I'll pick on that and that and I press OK I press apply and I've got it I'm not going to mesh the smaller end so I pick on plot controls pan zoom rotate and I'm going to pick back I'm looking at like that and now I could get rid of this get rid of this Close it, difficult to there. And I'm going to pick on set here, right set. And I'm going to pick on the second element, which is 18.4 millimeters. So it'll make the next one 18.4 millimeters. We got mesh, we pick on that. And it says it's picked up two, uh, it's picked up the back there. So we want the front. So we press the next to get the front. That's right. We press OK and we press apply here and we've got the mesh there and that's the model there and I'll pick on plot controls pan zoom rotate and I'm going to put on the right I'm going to uh, put right there because I've got this right end here is going to be blocked this this end here is going to um, a piece that's uh, um, it's got a, a solid plate there this end has got a hole in it, so I'm going to box that there, press apply, no it's wrong that, um, I've got to pick on solution, beg your pardon, define nodes, structural displacement on nodes, so I'm going to pick that box that I was going to pick there and I just made a slight mistake there, i box that in there and I'll press apply okay I'll press okay and I'll put all degrees of freedom and I'll press okay and I've restrained it completely there I'm not looking for pressure so I put on pressure and I put uh, on nodes I box that in there and I've got to box this in here now there's no pressure on here there's only lateral pressure so I've got to pick this box from slightly to the right of that end go around like that sit there press apply and I'll put the pressure in there, which is minus one. That's the uh, that'll give me the eigenvalue. Will be the will be the. You can see it hasn't put pressure on this end here, so that's fine. So now I've got to do. I've done that. I've restrained it, and uh, I've got to look for the. Solution analysis type. Uh, I'll pick on the unabridged menu and I pick on analysis options and I get this box here and I've got to put the pre stress on because I've got to work out the pre this is the pre stress here. Yeah, so I'll press that there and switch the pre stress on, that's fine. Now I can run the static analysis. I run a static analysis first to get the eigenvalues. So I'll solve 
current LS says it doesn't like some of the elements there but that's fine it's done it it doesn't like the elements at the end but they don't bug the claps anyhow so we've done that so that's fine we've done the static analysis now we've got the eigenvalue analysis so we've got analysis type new analysis the last one we've done was static so we've got an eigen we get rid of that we get rid of that we've got a solution we've got analysis options and this asks for the number of nodes we want we only need one, but I'm going to put 10 there just for interest. Put 10 there. Okay. And that's fine. Okay, again. Solve current LS. LS means load step. Doesn't like some of the elements there, but that's nothing to worry about because they're at the end. We've done the analysis. That's it. We do the general post processor now. We put on the first set is what we want to do. Read the first set. And then we put plot results. Um, then we put um, deform shape. Press that there. There we've got 14.119, which is exactly the same as the other method. It worked perfectly well. We've got plot controls. We've got pan zoom rotate. And we'll turn this round to the front. Like that. And then we'll click on plot controls. And we pick on animate, and we go on mode shape, and we make this time delay point 0.75, 0.75, and I've made too big there, doesn't matter, 0.75, that's fine, press OK, and there we've got it, it's 14.1 megapascal, which is elastic buckling pressure, the plastic buckling pressure was full, so we've got a plastic knockdown factor of just over 3, and it's at 7 lobes, and that looks like a 7 lobes, so it's been highly successful, thank you ladies and gentlemen.